Alwyn will talk to us a bit about really setting the scene around what the challenges and the opportunities that AI brings us in order to set the panel discussion up nicely for around, well, what do the boards need to do about AI? Thank you. So we had an iPhone moment in November of 2022 when ChatGPT got launched. You know, one of the co-founders is a friend of mine and I've seen the development of it. Even I, or he, didn't expect the take up, right? If, um, if you attend investor calls today, virtually almost every single investor call has the word AI in it. And if you look at the valuations and the amount of money being invested, it's gone up multifold. If you look at the take up of um, consumers uh, with, with uh, ChatGPT, for instance, zero to 100 million in eight weeks, yeah. So something is happening here. But I'd argue that actually we've seen this record play before, right? This is not the first time uh, this is happening. So if you cast your mind back, and maybe some of you can't, but I know some of you definitely can, um, to the times when PCs were introduced to the workspace, right? And you think about the revolution that that created. And then the PCs were connected to the internet. So the first wave of economic value creation was the PCs. The second, when they got connected to the internet. And then the third, when the mobile phone came along. Then the fourth, digital, and now we're in the fifth, AI. But each of these waves either created a lot of economic value for some and destroyed a tremendous amount of economic value for others. And I suppose if you look back, you think, OK, I get that. But what does that mean if I'm running a business? Yeah? And so I think, again, if you cast your mind back to the, to the 80s and the 90s, we spent a lot of money in what we call the integrated enterprise. We used software like SAP and Oracle to integrate sales and marketing to finance, finance to operation, operation to supply chain, and we became integrated. And then for the last 20 years or so, we said, oh, it has to be about digital transformation. We created omnichannel experiences, we developed mobile apps, we created frictionless customer journeys, we used data for predictive insight, we adopted a digital first mindset, remember that? And now we say, hey, look at us, we're digital. And I suppose the question is, what's next? Right? And in our view, what's next is what we call the intelligent enterprise, where it's an enterprise powered by AI. Every single business process, every single function will be powered by AI. And that's very, very different to how we see enterprises today. And I'll talk a bit about that. Yeah. So the North Star is the intelligent enterprise. Now, many companies will not get there in one step. Some might take a, you know, a few steps. Some might take years. It all depends on the competitive pressure that you are under and your ability to, you know, to morph from digital to intelligent. Yeah. And some definitions, because pre, pre the iPhone moment, the majority of my discussions were in the technical domain, right? The CEO did not want to talk about AI. But now, we can't stop them talking about AI, <laughs> right? And so, generative AI is what they really want to talk about, but they're banding it AI. And as Ian would know, I mean, AI is so much bigger, it's been around for a long time. But generative AI, capable of generating text, images, you know, audio, is what's changing, right? And, um, and why? Why now? Right? So, and this is very simplistic, so apologies to my panel who are going to look at this and think, wow, that's too simplistic. But anyway, you can break all AI systems down to these three categories. Systems that sense, systems that comprehend, and systems that respond. Sensing and responding actually been around for a while. You look at your iPhone, right? It senses who you are, image recognition, and then unlocks your phone. It's been around for a while, and there are many manifestations of sense and responding. What has really changed is comprehension to this invention of these large language models. And suddenly now we have a system that can comprehend. So if we ask the large language model, right, a, um, you know, we uploaded all the procedures for this hotel into the large language model, what you can, cannot do. Nobody here is going to say, can I smoke in the hotel? Because everybody knows you can't. What they might say is, can I smoke out in the courtyard? And then you have a system that says, OK, you know, the courtyard's part of a public space or a courtyard's part of the hotel. Yes, you can, and no, you can't. Comprehension. And the ability for the system now to comprehend is why everybody is getting super, super excited, yeah? And it's only getting more and more prevalent, right? I hosted the, um, you know, the, uh, the leadership team of OpenAI at, uh, at Imperial College, I think, uh, about five months ago. And Sam Altman said, basically, GPT-5 is trained on all available human knowledge. So unless there is some, I don't know, books in a cave somewhere and they don't have access to it, it pretty much has been trained, yeah? And, um, and as a result, this is now becoming the new normal. And it's exponential, right? The growth is exponential. Um, and, and, and previously, you know, we were in this world, okay, bear with me, where 
we grew up in this world where the underlying data connections between two pieces of data was what's called a relational database. I had a customer ID and a customer name, and they were linked. And I had to link all these data in a relational database, and that was hard to do. And the only way we could interact with a relational database is through simplistically what I call a form. When you go into, when you're on a bank statement, you say from what date to what date, you get some output. You want a dashboard, you get some output. You press a button, you get some output. It's a form. That's the way we communicated to systems. But that's completely changing now because the new way of communicating systems is via natural language. I don't need a link between the customer ID and customer name. I don't need that. I just need the customer name. In fact, my, if my model was sophisticated enough, I might not even need the customer name. So the ability now to prompt and use natural language is going to be the new way we communicate with these systems. So just like, you know, and some of you will remember this, Lotus 1, 2, 3. And for those of you who are too young, Excel, right? When Lotus 1, 2, 3 was introduced into the workforce, it was a big thing. Some companies had it, some didn't. We had Lotus 1, 2, 3 training. We don't teach anybody Excel. You just need to know it. And that's what's going to happen here. You're going to become good prompt engineers because it's a skill that everybody needs to have because that's going to be the way we communicate with these machines, right? And the technology is getting you know, much more mind-blowing, right? So you can take a picture of a, of a dish, and it tells you what the recipe is. You have generative AI voices. You can go to banter.ai and speak to Elon Musk. You can ask him any question you want, right? It takes about 10 minutes for the system to sort of identify and replicate you, right? So if your spouse calls you up and says, you know, I need $1,000, have a safe word, yeah? <laughs> have a safe word because, you know, how do you know it's your spouse, right? Um, text to video, and you think, well, how does it apply to me, right? But you think it costs 30,000 pounds for every half an hour of e-learning content that many, many companies <laughs> do and spend on to train people. But if I can do text to video, then what, what, why do I need to do all that? Right? So suddenly now we have a very disruptive technology that can impact every aspect of a corporation.